I'm glad you brought up ears popping Zond because today's lab is all about the very piece of body kit that enables that to happen. Today's lab is all about the amazing you station tube. My second favourite part of the body, after the epiglottis. Now, if you've ever swum down deep like Zand or been up in an aeroplane, you might have felt your ears popping or felt like they needed to pop. But why does it happen? Well, it's all to do with keeping the pressure inside of your head the same as the pressure outside of your head in the atmosphere around you. And to understand how they pop, take a look at this. Wait a minute, what is this? Chris, this looks suspiciously like my goldfish tank in which live my goldfish, Dolly and Dave. Don't worry, Zond, they've just gone on holiday for a couple of days. On holiday? Hi, Zond, we've gone to the seaside for a couple of days. See you soon, love, Dolly and Dave. <laughs> They didn't tell me they were going anywhere. Anyway, whilst they're away, they said I could use their tank. So this side of the tank represents the middle ear, the bit just behind your eardrum. And this side of the tank represents the outside world. And the water in the tank represents air pressure. There's high pressure in the outside world and low pressure in the middle ear. And this type of imbalance is really uncomfortable because the pressure pushes on the eardrum. And this is where your eustachian tube springs into action. Like this. When you swallow or yawn, it opens up, allowing the air pressure in the middle ear to equalise with the atmosphere around you. And it connects your middle ear to the back of your throat. But don't just take our word for it. We're going to show you where the opening to the eustachian tube is and what it looks like using this camera. I'm going to put it right to the back of my mouth, past the dangly bit. The uvula. Then I'll hook it over my soft palate and push it forward through my nose. The Operation Out sticker, that should be the opening to Zahn's eustachian tube. Now, we've never done this before, and I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to give it our best shot. We can only do this because we're doctors. Right, Zond, insert the camera. The camera's now going through Zahn's mouth. See the lab here? It's got the camera showing back at the lab. Now we're right at the back of Zahn's mouth, and that there is the entrance to Zahn's eustachian tube. That is an amazing view. There we go, we've actually found it. Wow. And if I shine this light up Zahn's nose, it shows you where the eustachian tube is in relation to his nostrils. What do you think, Zahn? Oh! So now you know where it is and how it works. But what would happen if it wasn't there at all? Well, let's find out. To the ouch roof. It's just the roof of the lab, Zond. A truth. This is an oil drum. Yes, but for the purposes of our experiment, let's call it the middle ear. That's this bit between the ear canal and the eustachian tube. OK, can we get on now? Yes. In the bottom of the drum is some water being heated by a burner and being turned into steam. This hole in the top of the drum represents your eustachian tube. So, with the top of the drum open like this, it represents what's going on inside your ear. The eustachian tube is equalising the pressure inside the ear with the pressure outside. But what would happen if this middle ear didn't have a eustachian tube? Well, we're going to show you. By putting the lid on the top of the oil drum, Chris is creating the same effect as if your eustachian tube wasn't working. We're going to cool down the outside of the drum, creating an imbalance between the pressure on the outside of the ear and the pressure on the inside. Just like what happens when you dive down deep or land in an aeroplane. So can you guess what will happen? Ready? Ah! <laughs> with no eustachian tube to equalise the lower pressure inside with the higher pressure outside, the drum imploded. And that's why you need a eustachian tube. And what's amazing about this is, this is a hard steel drum. It's not soft at all. And yet, it has been completely crushed by the atmospheric pressure. So without a eustachian tube, your body wouldn't be able to equalise the pressure between your middle ear and the atmosphere. We've shown you just where your eustachian tube is and why it's there. Without this incredible piece of body kit, you wouldn't be able to pop your ears, equalising the pressure inside with the pressure outside. So, now that's sorted, I'm off to see Dave and Dolly at the beach. I could use a few days on holiday. Well, haven't we got lucky with the weather? You know what I fancy for dinner? Fish and chips. I mean, uh, chips, just chips. O only the chips. Chips is best. 